Welcome yourself to your yoga mat. Today we're going to have a practice to release the low back, to offer some therapeutic uh, lengthening, stretching, and traction. I'm going to teach you guys a few self-tractioning techniques to help with the low back. One of the most fundamental things we can do if you are experiencing any kind of discomfort in the body, in the physical body, in the mental or emotional systems, is to remember the importance of your breath. So as you begin on your back, let your breath be the primary focus of your mind. Aware of your inhale, aware of your exhale. Think of this like a heavy lead anchor that will drop you into this precise moment. Your breath will never be ahead of you and it will never be behind you. So let's move a little bit with breath, uh, teeming breath with movement to become truly, truly embodied. I recommend keeping your eyes closed, bending your knees, setting your feet flat, and taking your hands to your low abdomen. You're gonna arch your spine a little bit so that you have a tunnel under your low back, and then exhale flat on your back making your tailbone long, maybe even feeling your buttocks flesh lift up a little bit off the yoga mat. And start to move back and forth between these two motions with your breath, with your inhale and exhale. And I actually recommend focusing less on how big the back bend gets. Don't worry about putting a big back bend, just a little tunnel here. But then as you flatten, really think about scooping all of the energy, almost like a yoga naomi, which I can show you later, but it's really just a, a suctioning. All air out. Inhale, neutral, or little back bend. Exhale, flatten and suction. Just do a couple more of these back and forth. Get your own pace. your chest and give yourself a big hug wrapping the arms around the knees rocking a little bit side to side you can really imagine that you're massaging out the muscles on the right and the left of your spine start to draw your knees in a little bit more so that you get uh, a bit more into the mid back your thoracolumbar junction, which is where your ribs meet your low back. Sometimes that's a place where many of us can carry tension. I would say, especially in the, in the world of yoga from all of our back bends. So really get up in there. And then set your feet down to the edges of your yoga, your yoga mat. So by edges, I mean like the side edges. So you're still in a similar place that you're in before, but now your feet are nice and wide and your eyes are open. You're just gonna drop your knees side to side. So really let the knees flop all the way down. Your outer thigh hopefully touches the floor. All the way down to the right, all the way down to the left, just going back and forth. And maybe even let your feet go a little bit wider. 
feet well off the mat onto the um, wood floor or the carpet if you have that at home. And just really like stretch your legs out in two directions. And go back and forth, side to side, like you're yawning your body. So our hips are one of the most important and essential things to warm up, essential joints to warm up. You're going to come back to center, set your feet flat, and then just do a, like one or two rolling bridges. So this is what I call a rolling bridge, flattening your back, rising up, and then lowering down vertebra by vertebra, like you're lowering a, a necklace back to the floor. So flatten your back and rise up, and then lower down vertebra by vertebra. And next time you come down, please cross your right ankle over your left thigh. Right ankle over your left thigh. You're going to take your right hand, instead of pushing at the knee, which can sometimes be uncomfortable and create some forces at the knee that aren't so pretty, you're going to push right at the fold of the legs. And you can even use both hands. You're going to push right at the joint of the hip to get a little bit of openness. Activate your right foot. I don't know if you guys can see that, but my foot is really curling back. Toes are curling back towards me. And then keep that pressure as you start to lift your left foot up and down, up and down off the floor. Go ahead. Sweep the right hand in between the legs now, and you can either catch behind the left thigh or in front of the left shin, or if, if neither of those are available, like within reach, you can just go right back to the position we were in a moment ago, kind of getting this lengthened side body long shape here on your right side. If you have your foot, your left foot off the ground, Rock just the tiniest little rock side to side. It's probably like 10 degrees that I'm moving to the right and 10 degrees that I'm moving to the left maximum. Just to get to a slightly different part of the back. Okay. And then release the hands wherever they are. You're just going to lift your left foot off the floor if it's not yet lifted. Take the whole legs just as they are, leg crossed over the knee over to the left so you come into a twist yeah you got it keep your your right knee pointed towards the sky and then bring your left hand so opposite hand to your thigh now and just push the thigh away reach your right arm out long on the floor first starting off to your side and then start to reach overhead like arm by the ear yeah, not towards the ceiling, but by the ear. Yeah. Gorgeous, you guys. Come back to center. And keep the legs crossed, but this time thigh over thigh. And so again, some of you are going to want to keep your feet on the floor. Some of you will feel comfortable lifting your feet off the floor. You can hug the first knee or the second knee. Just the tiniest little bit of rocking side to side. And we'll do the same exact thing on the other side, but in between, set your feet down, flat, lateral edges of your yoga mat. And just drop the knees right and left, yawning out through the body, opening up. And you might also, I'm noticing a big difference between one side and the other right now, just from that little three minutes, four minutes of attention that we gave to one side. So let me turn so you guys can see a little bit more. You're going to cross your left ankle over your right leg and just bring your left hand right here to the fold of the hip and press, tractioning out your body. Really activate your left foot, the one that's on top so that you have the figure four shape. 
And then optionally lift your right foot and reach behind the thigh in front of the knee. Start to rock a little side to side. So getting this gorgeous oscillation. Left foot stays active here. If you're on the ground, you can just push back into it. And then right foot floats up off the floor no matter where you are. Open your arms to the side and just let your feet, your whole leg apparatus fall over to the right. Right arm now is going to press into the fold of the inner left thigh, left arm reaches. And you can turn towards your left hand, really super duper reach. And then maybe even stretch and keep reaching out to the side if that feels good, or arm by your ear so that you get this gorgeous sense of tractioning throughout your, your low back, throughout your left side waist. Beautiful. Open the arms, come back through center, thigh over thigh now, and optionally hug it in. You can grab the front knee, you can grab the second knee, and just squeeze in so that you maybe even feel your mid-back on the floor. Beautiful. Send both legs straight towards the ceiling. And shake out your feet, shake out your legs. This is a really nice way to just get some movement into your hip joints. You can also turn your feet in and out like you're scratching a record. And then try to get the tiniest little like rock backs and forth in your low back. So all you're aiming to do is just get a little air under your hips. And this can be surprisingly simply, like a really simple but surprising uh, sort of core activation. Because you're taking the muscles that will draw the front of your pelvis closer to your low ribs and really working to get a little air without any effort from your arms. It's really, really powerful. And then settle your, the soles of your feet together. And let the soles of your feet come down onto the floor. And now you're going to take both hands to the hips and just press. Press into the fold of the hips, pressing the hips away from you. See if you can draw your low ribs down to the floor if you came into a little bit of a back bend as I did when I moved into this position. You can have your fingers pointed inward or you can have your fingers pointed outward, whatever works for you. Right, and then come back through center. Set your feet to the edges of your yoga mat and drop your knees side to side and just notice any difference, right versus left, right versus left. Yawn out through the body. Left knee presses forward as it comes on top. And as the right leg comes on top, press the right knee forward. So much length, so much spaciousness in your low back now. And we're gonna grab our block, bring the feet hip distance apart, place your block between the feet. I'm sorry, between the thighs. <laughs> Flatten your back again. Feel the low back press into the floor. Feel just a little bit of air right under your tailbone. And this time, start to turn your toes up towards the ceiling. So the only thing touching the floor in terms of your foot is your heel. And you're gonna dig the heels in, squeeze the block, lift up, and literally like traction your spine. You might even hold on to the sides of your yoga mat overhead and just feel like you're lengthening your whole back. So this takes a lot of work at the back of the legs. It's not exactly what I would call a gentle move, but it's a really powerful, simple way to create space in your low back. And even within this very, very active hamstring heavy bridge, you can shift your hips a little side to side, getting more length on the left and more length on the right. It's a cool one. Okay. That's a nice long hold, slowly lower yourself down. You can switch the hands to the sides of the mat. 
And this time you're pulling, you're sort of pushing the arms down and digging the heels in and pulling the hips forward. It takes a little um, mental like override to make those two actions happen. But I'm literally tractioning my spine right now, just activating through the arms, activating through the legs. Whew, that is great. Release your block over to the side. Um, draw your knees into your chest, this time soles of the feet together, and rock a little side to side here. Anytime you bring your knees to your chest, whether it's um, knees straight in or knees out to the side or happy baby, you actually have a choice with whether you want to make um, a little bit of a hip, hip opening or focus more on the spine. So the more you keep your pelvis down and emphasize like sacrum down, tailbone down, the more it's going to go straight into the hips. I'm demonstrating that right now. But let's say you want to get into your low back. Let's say things are tight there. You've been sort of doing a lot of back bends. You know, the next day you might still have some tightness. So you might take your hands to your ankles and just pull the tailbone up. And that's going to get you into your low back. And that would be true if you're here, knees to chest, knees together. It's true if your feet are together and you're curling up. And it's true if the soles of your feet are to the sky and you're in a healthy baby. And you're drawing your knees down to the floor. So just do a little rock side to side, really getting into whatever part of the back feels good, whatever part of the hips feel good to you right now. It's a little choose your own adventure, 60 seconds within the practice. And then slowly release your feet or your legs, roll over to one side, and come up to a seated. That's very dramatic. Okay, I'm a huge fan of sitting on the blanket. And the reason for that is because I can sit pretty comfortably on the floor without a blanket. But you'll notice that um, I, I don't have pretty much any low back curve when I'm sitting here. So on some level, I am very subtly like 10 degrees tilted backwards in my pelvis, posteriorly tilted in my pelvis. And so when you sit on the blanket, especially, it doesn't have to be a lot, but just the very front edge of the blanket, bam, you get your kickstand back. You get that nice little like angle of the sacrum, the forward tilt of the pelvis, and for me, that feels better, so you can experiment with that. It also conveniently gets your knees down a little below the height of the pelvis. Okay, pay attention to the leg that you have in front, and note, and we're gonna inhale, reach the arms up, and exhale, spin to your left, take your left hand behind you, and either take your right hand to the outside of the thigh or to the top of the thigh. So you can push down and really lift your heart and spin looking out over your back shoulder. Back to center, arms up, lengthen. Take it to the other side. So right hand behind you, left hand to either to the outside of the opposite leg or to the top of the thigh, getting a bit of that lengthening, that traction. As you inhale, this is your breath again, powerfully lengthen upward. As you exhale, spin, looking past your back shoulder. Inhale back to center. And then switch the leg that's in front. Walk your right hand out on your yoga mat just a little bit. Lift our bottom and over. So nice side bend. Whenever I go into a side bend, I think side bends are a way that we often um, kind of go around whatever tightness, whatever issues we have in our spines. So whenever I go into the side bend, I think I think about for me, my tendency is probably to stick my ribs out. So I think a lot about ribs in, 
pulling back, engaging the core so I can really be in this plane. But for some of us, it might be at the neck or it might be somewhere else in the back, the shoulder, maybe the arm goes forward. So we're working on really, really reaching. Inhale up and take it to the other side. Really, really reach. And inhale up. And sweep the arms up towards the sky. Catch hold of your left wrist. And lean again. So similar stuff, but now we're a little more focused on the length. And inhale up and switch sides. And lean. Good. Inhale up. And we're going to... Keep the arms up. This time, twist to the right first. Bring your left hand to the top of the right thigh. And walk it in nice and close. Press down, float the heart. Look out over your back shoulder. Your inhale lengthens you. Your exhale spins you just a little bit deeper into the twist. Keep the hand on the opposite thigh, but reach your right arm towards the sky now. So you're going to press right arm to the sky and untwist a little bit. And twist back to center. So you can think of this in two directions. Either straight out, we're going to lean over. You can think of it as leaning straight over to your left. Or you can think of it as leaning out over the left thigh. So whichever one feels good for you. I'm pushing away here. Reaching up and leaning. Full breath. Rise it up. And let's take it to the other side. Arms up. Nice and tall. So every inhale lengthens us. And exhale into your twist. Right hand now on the upper left thigh. Get it close in. And just push down to help you rise. As you exhale go a little deeper, look out of your back shoulder. And then slowly come back to center. Left arm up towards the ceiling. And we're pushing away with the right arm. Lean, lean, lean. Inhale up, exhale, hands down, and just kind of lean a bit and twist a bit right and left. Draw your knees out through center, and remember which leg is in front. Set your feet out in front of you, and just let your knees drop side to side. So almost the same thing we did on our back. Slightly different angle with the hips now. The next time your knees come over to the left, we'll start to walk over to that side and keep spinning all the way to the back of your yoga mat. So here, I have a wall behind me. I'm going to push it away a little bit. Here, you can simply keep reaching and lower yourself down since your blanket is close in to you. You might even put your blanket on your belly and just fold back. This is really hard to show on camera, but um, the leg that is behind, which is now your right leg, yeah, you can reach your left arm in the direction of that foot. And maybe catch your foot. And optionally, maybe catch your right foot with your left hand. You're going to really profound twist. Release your hands. Walk your hands back to the floor. Rise up. Come all the way back to center. 
So set your feet flat to the floor, palms down or fists down, scoop your belly and rise to reverse table. And shift a little forward and back here. If it feels good, you can let your head drop back. And lower down. And take your knees to the other side. So knees all the way over to your right. Walk your hands all the way towards the back of your yoga mat. Lengthen up with your inhale and exhale, fold down. So you can fold over your blanket. If you have a bolster, you can fold over a bolster. Good things can happen. Your block. So again, it's opposite hand reaching to opposite foot. Only if this is easeful for you. So the thing that 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 I think is not talked enough about in twists is that twists have to be functional for the body. At the end of the day, the way that our yoga can serve us on the physical plane in our body is if it makes it easier to reach and pick up and move our bodies through space to do the things that we have to do on a daily basis. That will be much more uplifting to our lives than a beautiful photo or still holding of an image or the idea of a posture. So if the foot comes in, within easy reach and it feels relatively easeful, that can be a playful exploration. And if not, let it go. Don't worry about it. We're gonna unwind, so release the feet. Rise up, come back to center, and take the soles of the feet together but do have your blanket or whatever you're sitting on, again, if, should you choose to use that. So here in Baddha Konasana, bound angle toes, soles of the feet together, you can take the hands to the uh, top of the thighs and just move a little side to side. And then draw the feet in. And use your blanket as needed under your knees to take the knees nice and wide. So I just opened the blanket. Kind of wall. I'm going to separate my knees on this and lower down into Mandukasana or frog pose. So Mandukasana, you have your feet directly back from the knees. Feet are active. Rock back and forth a little bit. You're aiming to keep your pelvis level with the floor. Just get a little bit of inner thigh opening. You can also really activate through your legs here and walk your forearms out, just dig in a little bit, creating a bit of traction or at least a little bit of activation of the front body muscles. Good, walk your hands back. Curl your toes under, bring the feet a little closer together. I'm gonna move the blanket so you can see. And come into toe stand. So from toe stand, if you feel comfortable here, squeeze your heels together. Maybe take one hand up and then the other. Just for a little playful balance practice. If this bothers your knees, come right back out of it. And set your hands to the floor. Separate your feet a little wider from one another. And bring your hands to your knees. We're going to stay partially stand up. And then walk the hands all the way in towards the upper, upper thighs, straightening out the elbows. So you guys see, see what that looks like? Your shoulders are going to come close to your ears, but you're not overactivating neck muscles. You're not overactivating upper trapezius. 
you can have your hands pointed in whatever direction feels good. The idea is that you're lengthening your spine. Inhale, rise up. Keep a little bend in your knees. And slowly, for a big bend in your knees, slowly fold down. Let your head be heavy. Shake it a little left and right. And nod it up and down. Really inviting a lot of length. Inviting gravity to do some work for you. I recommend first grabbing hold of your elbows. So when you grab hold of your elbows, your spine really is at its fullest capacity to lengthen, to find ease, to find space. And then interlace your fingers and pluck your hands right behind the base of the skull so that you're getting this very gentle tractioning or pull down from the entirety of your spine right now. Try letting the arms just be heavy. So instead of pulling, just in my legs. In this shape, you guys, you can oscillate, you can kind of wiggle a little right and left and allow the work of gravity, the effort <laughs> to be gravity's effort to pull you down. All your task is is to create relaxation in the muscles themselves. Beautiful. Rise up and then Walk your hands out a little bit, and your feet back a little bit, downward facing dog. Bring your toes to touch one another, rise your right leg, and just, I recommend bending both knees and kind of yawning out through the body here. Bringing the knee to the sky, lengthening, and lower down, and raise your other leg up, bending both knees, in two directions, yawning out through the body, lengthening, and then lower down and then lower to the knees. So from this active, lengthened child's pose position, knees a little bit wider than the torso so you can spaciously rest within it. Walk your hands off to the right side of the mat. So you're coming into a very similar side bend that you were in earlier. And if you keep walking, so I'm at about 2.30 on the clock, curl your left hand, left fingers, over the right. And then you just reach a little bit more. Lift your hips up, elbow straight, reach. I've you know, mentally glued my hand down to the floor so that when I sit back, I'm getting some traction on the left side of my low back because the elbows are straight and the arms are active and the hips are sinking back towards the heel. My forehead can just rest right here. Head rests between the arms. Even inside of this activity, let yourself be soft. On your next inhale, look up. Walk your hands all the way over to the other side. And you're interlacing your right fingers over the left now, right? So you're walking your hands up, reaching, lifting the hips just the tiniest little bit, and then gluing, sort of sinking the hips back down towards the floor. If your elbows are really straight like mine are, you can just rest your forehead right there. You don't have to sink it down to the floor all the way unless you want to. You might be feeling an um, expansion in your side ribs. You might be feeling some talk in your low back. Mm -hmm. 
and slowly walk the hands back to center. Rise up and um, recross the legs. So take the leg in front that is your non-typical leg to take in front. I talked earlier about a way of sitting that is um, that is a little nicer on the body sitting with a blanket. But if you don't have a blanket, you can do something pretty similar with a strap. So you can take your strap and make a big loop like this. And you'll want to take a part that doesn't have the buckle on it around the very, very top of your pelvis and back. So I've made a big loop. In my case, I'm going to open it up enough to hook my knees under. And then I'm going to close it back in. Actually. Open it up again to get the front of the knees, the front of the knees into the strap. So this is a really nice kind of effortless way to find length in your spine to sit. If you prefer the blanket, go back to the blanket. But we're going to just take a couple of breaths here in meditation soft and centered. For those of you who travel for work, like so many people do in Washington, D.C., if you travel for your work and you struggle to keep a meditation practice going when you travel, this is a really simple thing you can do. You can do it in the bed, on the floor. You don't need a special cushion wherever you go. Let's take a full breath in. Big sigh out, close your eyes as you exhale. Let your palms rest in your lap. Feel the support of the ground, feel the support of the strap. Feel any newfound length that has been created in your spine from our practice today. Press through the crown of the head. Work your ears up towards the ceiling. Create a little space between your top teeth and your bottom teeth. Tongue floats to the roof of the mouth. Each inhale invites spaciousness, more air, more gap between the bones, between the vertebrae. And as your breath anchors you down, it also lifts you up. You can imagine a string through the crown of your head reaching towards the ceiling. You're welcome to stay here for another couple of moments. Have a lie down on your back for Shavasana. Remember your only 
task right now is to notice when your mind wanders. When your mind wanders, to return it to this moment through your breath. Through the body. Through the spaciousness of greater knowing. invite your breath to be a little bit deeper. If your mind is wandering, bring it back to the presence. It's always there for you in the body. Wiggling stretching, yawning up. Slowly draw your knees to your chest if you're on your back. Gently rock side to side. Rock to your right side to press up towards a comfortable seat. Press your palms together over your heart. Start with a thank you to yourself for showing up for self care today, for movement, for peace. Let's also uh, channel our capacity for well-being, our privilege of being here, our uh, any resonant increase in capacity to be fully present in this moment. Let's channel that into creating powerful good things in the world around us. To seal that intention Please, we'll begin with a full breath in and then share the sound of all. Please join me. Up again for showing up, showing up with these 99% sometimes. And then thank those who shared your practice. Namaste.